please feel free to continue eating. Uh, we won't let the uh, clink, clink, clink of dishes distract us at all. And we're going to resume our program now. Uh, you know, we think a lot about the future. We've been talking a little bit about the college. And we've been using a phrase saying it's grow time. Now, many of you may not know where we got that phrase, but we hired this guy from Ohio. Why, we don't know. <laughs> but if he comes in, and he's a Seinfeld nut. And there's the mantle bombs. When they were on Seinfeld, they always want to fight and say, it's go time, it's go time. So we stole that and said, no, it's grow time. So we kind of like knowing where it comes from, but Tom, I'm just teasing you, you did a great job coming up with that ridiculous slogan. But it is grow time. 82 people a day move into Collin County. 82 people a day. You can tell if you're on the roads at all. <laughs> so we've got three, other, three campuses, three major campuses today in Plano, McKinney, and Frisco, and several other smaller locations. But it's not going to be three camps and four other smaller locations for long. By 2020, we will open, by fall of 2020, a major campus in Wiley, Texas, able to serve 7,500 students. And that same fall, we'll open a technical campus in Allen, just down the road, able to serve a little over 7,000 students. I know that Scott Niven is here, the superintendent from Allen. Scott, where are you? Just shout out, Scott, because I can't see you. There he is. We have an incredible partnership with Allen ISD. Uh, they partnered with us to help us build an extra 42,000 square feet that will serve 2,100 of their students, about 700 students a year, earning an associate's degree before they ever leave high school. That is a good deal. So I want to call out to him and give him thanks while we're here. So by 2021, we're going to have seven fully functional camps, including another one in Salina for about 12, 2,200 students, and another one in Farmersville for about 1,200 students. Seven full campuses, plus the Public Safety Training Center in McKinney for police and fire academies, plus the Collin Higher Education Center right in McKinney, Texas, where five universities are partnered to offer bachelor's, master's, and doctorates do you know which, which university in Collin County is the largest, the longest serving, and the most students? How about 4,000 students between those five universities at Collins Higher Education Center, which has been up and running for eight years? Folks, there are opportunities all around us, and they're getting more and more and more. This year, that grow time that I was talking about earlier, it's already here. This semester alone, we grew 6.6% adding over 2,000 students at a time when full employment is the rule of the day. Folks, that's just incredible. And a lot of you in this room helped make that happen, so thank you. <laughs> this fall, we broke another record. We've got almost 34,000 students enrolled at Collin College in the fall alone. In just two years, we've added an entire Galveston Community College or Cisco Community College. It's just amazing the growth that we enjoy. And all of this for what? The lowest tuition in the state of Texas. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> the growth isn't just about numbers, it's also about the mind. And I'm not talking about a three-day marathon on a fortnight. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Growth, and for those of you that didn't laugh, that's a, that's a video game. <laughs> <laughs> that's still, when you're supposed to be studying, students, what are you really doing? Fortnight. I know. I played it just one time. It was a little too complex for me. <laughs> Growth's going to challenge professionals in every job field to stretch, adapt, and work collaboratively. Being successful might not look like you used to, but it's going to include still a successful collection of skills, knowledge, and abilities in each student's educational toolbox. Growth is also going to require the leaders of tomorrow to exercise integrity and to be resilient. We're incredibly blessed to live in this growing community, this fluent community, this highly educated community. But guess what? There remains a gap between wealth and poverty. And that gap, even in Collin County, is growing as well. 
Education is one of the few causes with the power to change not just one life, but lives for multiple generations. We're profoundly grateful for all the patrons who help our students teach, reach their full potential. On behalf of Collin College, I'd like to recognize our donors for the gifts and their commitment to higher education. Donors, would you all please stand at this time so we can show you our appreciation. standing empty your pockets. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but speaking of that, we do have big goals for fundraising because our students are an investment in our future. Looking around the room at all the student faces and the folks that I've gotten to know this evening at my table, I, I believe with all my heart that there's no better investment in the world than investing in our students. Now students, I know that your head may be spinning right now from the calculus assignment that's waiting for you to get home. I meant to say Fortnite. <laughs> but we know you will take the lessons from the classroom and solve problems of an increasingly complicated world. We believe in you, and you're joined by more than 500,000 alumni. In 33 years, 500,000 students, and more than 500,000, have gone through Collin College. Thank you for choosing Collin College, which I believe is the starting point for your brighter future. We're glad to have you. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Tammy McSwain, the chair of the College Foundation Board of Directors, to come forward for remarks on behalf of the foundation. Good evening, everybody. It is my pleasure to begin the presentation of the 2018 scholarship class. This evening, we'll recognize our students by groups. So students, when I announce your group, which is listed on your name tag and in the program, please stand to be recognized. First, the Board of Trustees Scholars. The Collin College Board of Trustees is committed to providing opportunities for students to pursue academic excellence. These scholarships honor the Board's service and commitment. Will the students who received the Board of Trustees Scholarships Please stand and be recognized. Next, we have the Academic Excellence Endowments. These endowments were established by major gift donors to strengthen specific programs at Collin College. I would like for students receiving this Academic Excellence Endowment Scholarship to stand as we hold the applause until they are all standing. Please stand if you are a recipient of the following Academic Excellence Scholarships. The Labrecht Heights Transfer Scholarship, Royden L. Labrecht Endowed Chair for Scholarly and Civic Engagement Scholarship, the Sam E. Roach Endowed Chair in Business and Engineering Scholarship, and the Texas Instruments Science, Mathematics, Advanced Research, and Technology Scholarship. Let's please give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, we would like to acknowledge a special group of Collin College faculty. Each year, we honor outstanding contributions made by faculty in and out of the classroom with scholarships in their name. Before we announce the next group of student honorees, I would like for the faculty after whom these scholarships have been named to stand so we can applaud your exemplary service. Will the engaged faculty please stand? Now, will the student honorees for the named faculty scholarships please stand as well and be recognized? Dedicated, passionate, and generous supporters of the Collin College Foundation have created endowed scholarships which are named by the donors. Some honor family members, friends, or a company, and each and every one adds value to the college, 
the foundation, and our communities. Now, it is my privilege to acknowledge this group of scholarship winners. Would the recipients of all endowed scholarships please stand and be recognized? works with individual donors, organizations, and companies to support academic excellence through generous annual scholarships that bear the name of the donor or designee. Would the students receiving annual scholarships please stand and be recognized. College Foundation Board of Directors is tasked with raising these funds so more students have the opportunity to attend Collin College and graduate. I would like to recognize our board members in attendance, so as I call your name, please stand and let's hold the applause until we've all been introduced. Ray Smith, Vice Chair, you'll get to see him next year. Craig Overstreet, Secretary. Milton Bushbaum, Treasurer. Bill Cox, immediate past chair, Fred Moses, Board of Trustees representative, Glenn Callison, Anita Collins, Steve Ewing, Matt Ford, Matthew Foster, Mayor Masso, Dr. Neil Matthew, Dr. Raj Menon, Fred Monty, Kim Moore, Jim Orr, Shep Stahl, and Keith Wright. Please join me in thanking them for this. And in their honor, we would like to recognize the recipients of the Foundation Board of Directors Scholarships. These scholarships are awarded through the kindness of many donors who contributed to the General Scholarship Fund. Would the recipients of all of our Foundation Board of Directors Scholarships please stand and be recognized. As you can tell, this takes a big team to make all this happen, so thank you for supporting all of our students. This year, we were very fortunate to be able to select two winners of the Labrecht Heights Transfer Scholarship for 2018, Tiffany Page Carter and Linda Vasquez. Ladies, will you please stand so we can give you a round of applause? tonight and I'm sure you will agree that her story is compelling. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2018 Labrecht Heights Scholar Tiffany Page Carter. My name is Tiffany Page Carter, and I'm very honored to have the opportunity to speak to all of you this evening. As one of the Collin College Labrecht Heights Family Transfer Scholarship recipients, I've been asked to speak about my journey to becoming a member of the Collin College Pride. With that said, I would first and foremost like to extend my most sincere gratitude to the many generous Collin College Foundation donors and Colin faculty that work to provide amazing opportunities like this one to the students of Colin College. So a little about my journey to becoming Colin alumni. My story is one of numbers, each full of life-altering moments reflected in ages, dates, and tarnished by some missed opportunities. Prior to my arrival at Colin, no one in my family had ever graduated from college. In fact, my mother was a teen mom at 16 and never graduated from high school. By 23, she had four little girls, was an amazing stay-at-home mom, and my dad, only a year older, was working as a mailman and a music and youth minister. After the four of us finished high school, there were no college funds to be seen, so college wasn't exactly encouraged. I decided to go anyway, yet working two jobs and dealing with my parents' divorce 
proved to be too overwhelming for 19-year-old me. By 21, I had moved from my small East Texas town to the Dallas area and was working full time and taking courses here and there at my local community college. Unfortunately, I was too focused on my demanding job than on my education, and I felt to finish. At age 25, my husband and I found out that we were expecting our first child. And on March 4th, 2008, our Sam was born. As the months passed, we noticed that our perfect little boy was also our silent little boy. And on November 12, 2009, at 20 months old, Sam was diagnosed with severe autism. Life as we knew it stopped, and our journey as the parents of a child with special needs began. I was technically a stay-at-home mom, yet between trips to the neurologist, occupational, speech, physical, and behavioral analysis therapist five days a week, we weren't exactly home much especially considering that none of these therapies or specialists were at the same place. Returning to work, let alone college, became a distant goal. And my only focus was on being a caregiver for our child. Fast forward to 2016, our Sam was eight years old, and he now had a crazy, typical little three-year-old brother, Jack. Sam was no longer silent, speaking his first words at four and a half, yet he was still very severely affected by autism. We had every hope for our son and still do today, but we knew that it was our responsibility to prepare for him to live with us forever and then prepare for him to live when we were gone. So that led me to Colin College. And during my time at this amazing institution, I met so many influential, caring, and talented professors. Tonight, I would like to tell you about one of them in particular that quite literally changed my life. Excuse me. I first met Professor Scott Yarborough in December 2017, working as a senior student editor for Collin College's Literary Journal courses. I later signed up to take his creative writing honors course. Throughout my time in his classroom, Professor Yarborough instilled within each of us the idea that we shouldn't focus on potential rejection when submitting our work for publication, or applying for opportunities, yet that we should instead understand that we would most certainly miss every single opportunity that we didn't take, so why not go for it? Because of his encouragement, I began to truly see that it wasn't too late to continue pursuing my academic goals, nor absurd to apply for prestigious scholarships, student research conferences, or writing competitions, even when you're 35 with two children. During my final semester at Collin, I was chosen to present my research on Texas Medicaid and children with autism. I had my first poem published, and I applied for many prestigious scholarships, including this one. Professor Yarbrough's encouragement left a lasting mark and continued to help push me to apply at the University of Texas at Dallas, where I found out after graduating from Collin that I was chosen as a UTD Terry Scholar fully covering the remaining cost of my tuition. This past May, I became the first person in my family to graduate from college. With the help of this amazing gift from the College, college Foundation, I will also become the first person in my family to attain a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Arts, Technology, and Emerging Communication, and a minor in Psychology. This change not only my story that you've heard some of here today, but that of my entire family as well. I look forward to showing both of my children the absolute hope that lies in education. And I humbly thank you again for affording me with the precious opportunity to do so. Thank you.
I have the privilege every year of sitting with the student speakers who come and speak to us. And every year I do the same thing. I try to encourage them. I say things like, don't worry if you fail, we're going to laugh at you. <laughs> and this year I have the privilege of sitting with Dr. Sam Holmes and his beautiful wife. I asked Reverend Holmes, and she's a little nervous, would you give her some kind words? She said, pray. And then he said, be your unique self. And he went on to talk about how her unique self was special. And I think what I'd like to tell you, I know your biggest fear was tripping, but I was rushing to try to catch you just in case. Thank you. But I think Sam and Jack are pretty lucky kids. That's what I think. So Tiffany, thank you. Tiffany, thank you, oh, thank you so much. Folks, the late Steve Jobs of Apple fame was famous for having a keynote where he would say, and just one more thing. And I'm not trying to emulate him at all, but we do have just one more thing. As I call your name, will the following students please stand? And even if I butcher your name, you should stand if you recognize it's you. <laughs> Shahar Alva Lansi. Can I get it anywhere close to correct? Molly Brown, Trevor Gross, Abigail Heidenreich, Jessica Hernandez, John Knight, William Merrill, Ashley Moore, Zanat Suleiman, and Jennifer Valdez. Ladies and gentlemen, these 10 students scored the highest in the scholarship selection process and as a result, received an additional book scholarship courtesy of our Barnes and Noble College friends. Let's congratulate them at this time and show our applause. Thank you to Barnes and Nobles. We're appreciative of your support as always. It's been a great partnership. Students, we truly believe in your potential, and we look forward to seeing your leadership in your chosen fields here at Collin and beyond. We're very proud to have you at Collin College. You know, Collin is affordable, but we're far from being last chance to you. Our first choice in an event we don't get accepted to the university we want to go to. In fact, more and more students are recognizing that this fully sax accredited institution with amazing faculty and staff who truly care about our students is actually the first choice. And I think you're gonna see that happen more and more. So we are proud to have you here. We look forward to your success as members of our student organization, the Pride, and our official alumni association. One last note, we believe in recycling here at Collin College. If you would please leave your name tags on the table. Before you leave. This concludes our 2018 scholarship reception. Thank you, God bless, and good night.